and welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I wanted to talk about teacher evaluation and teacher observations. I just recently had my teacher observation, which was performed by my principal. And the way that it went about, she came into my classroom while I was doing instruction with the students and she sat for about 20 minutes. While she was in my classroom, she was taking notes of how I was engaging with the students during instruction, how I was asking questions, how I was following up on my questions, how I was giving praise, and the content of the lesson. She was also observing my classroom environment in order to assess me in some other standards that are assessed through an observation, which I will go over what those standards are in a moment. So after she conducted that observation, I met with her the very next day so that we can sit down and talk about what were the behaviors and the different things that she observed while she was in my classroom for those 20 minutes. And it was a very good conversation. I have to say that in all my 17 years, soon to be 18 years of teaching, I haven't had a principal actually asked me to sit next to her side by side while she was looking at her computer at the evaluation form and what were the comics that she had typed for each of those professional standards. So it was really refreshing and I felt like I was with a colleague of mine that was at a level plane. She was more like a coach and a mentor trying to tell me these were the different things that I observed and now I would like for you to think about these other things. It was a really, really great post-observation meeting so we were able to discuss what it was she observed and it was nice because sometimes it's hard for me to see all of the different things that i am doing because a lot of the things come naturally to me but when she went over how i was providing feedback and it was specific feedback not just hey good job or great answer i was actually letting the students know what of their answer made it great and i was repeating part of their answer to me so i was validating what they were answering as well as giving them feedback all at the same time. And there were other things that I just do naturally that I guess comes with experience because I have been teaching for now almost 18 years. So it was great to see someone else on the outside notice those things and I, I was like, oh yeah, I guess, yeah, I am doing those things. It, it just happened naturally to me. Now I only get observed once a year by a principal or an assistant principal and the reason for that is because now I am a veteran teacher teachers who have been teaching for about up to three years I believe if not five I gotta double check that they get observed twice a year so they get two observations that the assistant principal or the principal comes in to observe them for about 20 minutes now these observations are not announced they just come in unannounced and sit down and observe whatever it is that's happening during the 20 minutes that they're in the classroom. So I do not have to provide lesson plans ahead in advance. I I don't get a notice saying, hey, I'll be showing up to your classroom this week. I, I don't get any warning that they're coming in. I do have to say that at the beginning of my teacher career, that was very nerve wracking. It was a little scary because you didn't know when they were coming in. And then as a new teacher, you are not sure or 100% sure if you're doing everything the way that is supposed to be done or expected to be done. But I have to say that as the years go by, you do kind of get used to them just coming in. I worked at a school before this one where there were people in my room almost every week to the point that as soon as somebody from the district or from the region came into my classroom and started walking around my room and looking at different things I had in my classroom, I just got used to it. And I know that when they come in, I just ignore them. I don't even acknowledge them. I don't even say anything. So. Yeah, I, I know that in the beginning it might be kind of nerve wracking to have someone come into your classroom and sit down and observe you, but as the years go by, you do get used to it. It's just part of the profession, part of what comes with the job. So I wanted to go ahead and talk about what are those professional standards that we get evaluated on. Not all of the standards are observable. So when my principal came in, there were only a few standards that she was looking to see if I was meeting. And then there are some standards that are assessed in a different way that does not include an observation. So I wanna go over that right now with you. And again, this is only pertaining to my school district. I am in Miami-Dade County, which is a county in Florida. You have to check if you are a teacher or thinking about becoming a teacher, you have to check how the evaluation process is done in your county and in your state. 
All right, so without further ado, let me get to the paper so I can show you some forms as well as some of the examples that I've had this year and last year. So I wanted to start by going over the timeline that is given to us. This is right off of our district website and we have access to this so that we know what are the dates in which the IPEGS timeline is being implemented and IPEG stands for Instructional Performance Evaluation and Growth System. So that is basically the system that our district uses to evaluate teachers. So it all starts in the beginning of the year. We have a deadline in October, which is we need to submit our DPGT. That's our Deliberate Practice Growth Target. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like in a moment. So they even tell us what form number we need to use in order to fill that out. So we have to turn it in to our administrator and we need to review it with them before we sign and initial the DPGT. Then the observations start um, around October once those are submitted. And as you can see, there are different steps in which the IPEG system is implemented and all observations needed to be done by March 22nd, which was right before spring break. So now the next part of it is we need to submit our documentation for our communication and our professional development that we've gone through this year, as well as update our DPGT form. And then we meet for our summative evaluations at the end of the year with the principal or an assistant principal. So this is the DPGT form, Deliberate Practice Growth Target form that our district has us complete at the beginning of the year, as you saw, by the end of October. And basically we have to go over a focus that we create based on our reflections on our current student achievement data. And then we need to identify something that we're going to focus on to help us grow professionally and improve student learning. From that, we determine what our growth target is and then our plan of action. Now we're getting ready to go ahead and do our reflection of what we said we were gonna do up here. We're gonna do this soon and we need to turn it in along with our documentation to our assistant principals and principal, which will then evaluate this, go over it and discuss it during our summative meeting at the end of the year. To show you an example of what my DPGT was for this year, this is what I said I was going to focus on based on the category that the students needed to focus on this year. I, I plan to continue to implement Chris strategies along with participating in monthly ICAD meetings and seeking additional reading strategies through grade level meetings and collaborative planning. And my goal was to make sure I provided my students with a classroom learning environment that met their instructional needs and increased overall literacy proficiency. And that I plan to do this through career strategies, technology integration, analysis of student data, and collaborative planning opportunities. So I just have to now fill this part out, which is gonna be coming up in the next few weeks. And then that will be it for this form. That form gets a rubric, and this is the rubric that, again, our district provides for us, and we get points based on whether or not we developed it and the outcome of our reflection. So that is basically the first part of our evaluation process. Now, once we complete the reflection on our DPGT, we then have to, at the end of the year, before we submit it, along with our documentation, include this cover sheet that we need to make sure that we go ahead and give artifacts that show what type of professional development and growth experiences we participated in this school year, along with the communication that we engaged in, not just with parents, but with students, the staff, and other members of the learning community. So to this cover sheet, we attach a sample communication log. And again, this is just a sample, and we just use this as a way to log what kind of communications we had in the year. But if we use Class Dojo or Remind, we are encouraged to also include a copy of a report that shows the types of communications that we conducted using that, along with emails that we might have sent to our fellow teachers or grade level members or people in the school. Now, going back to the observation, this is the observation sheet that my administrators use when they are observing a teacher. Now, as you can see, the standards that they are observing are Professional Standard 2, Knowledge of Learners, Professional Standard 3, Instructional Planning, Professional Standard 4, Instructional Delivery and Engagement, and last but not least, Professional Standard 8, Learning Environment. So those are the four standards that are observed during an observation. The other three standards are not observed during an observation. These are 
based on the artifacts that we provide for communication and the artifacts that we provide for professional development. Now, standard five assessment is also not an observable standard because that is related to the data that we gather during the year. So that, that is something else that we need to provide as an example of how we have been able to do that. Now, what you don't see here is professional standard one, which is learner progress. And that is assessed based on how the students perform on their Florida Standards Assessment, the FSA. So after an observation meeting, this is what my principal went over with me, and then we sign it together, and then I receive a copy of my observation sheet. During the summative meeting at the end of the year, the assistant principal or the principal share what are the results of our progress for each professional standard. So as you can see, professional standard one learner progress, that is a percentage point that is assessed according to how the students do on the FSA assessment. This is usually not given to us until the following school year. Since right now we are finishing off or starting to finish off our FSA standards assessment. Actually, this is the first week that we started our computer-based assessment for FSA, and we will not finish until May 18th. So the state takes a while, obviously, because every single student in the state of Florida from third grade all the way up to 10th grade and retakes take the FSA, and they need to grade that test and then give those results to the schools and then develop the percentage points that each teacher acquires based on how the students perform in that test. But as you can see here, we are assessed by highly effective, effective developing slash needs improvement or unsatisfactory. Here's professional standard two, which is one of the observable standards. And here are the possible points that we can earn based on highly effective, effective developing slash needs improvement or unsatisfactory. Each of these pages, when they go over it with us at the end of the year, they have a check on which section we get along with some comments at times, but we do have to initial them and our assessor also initials them. Then on the next page, we have professional standard three, and again, they get to check off whether we're highly effective, effective, developing slash needs improvement, or unsatisfactory. Here's professional standard four. Professional standard five. Professional standard six. professional standard seven, and professional standard eight. And we get a total of all of those points and that determines whether we are overall highly effective, effective, developing needs improvement or unsatisfactory. And here is how the points break down this year. Sometimes they change according to the year, but this is basically how they break down. And then we obviously sign and we provide the documentation that is needed in order to go along with all of these standards. This is another sheet that is provided to us in case we need to understand what are the different indicators that address each of the professional standards. So here's professional standard two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Obviously professional standard one, which is progress of learners, is determined based on how the students do under Florida Standards Assessment, which is our state assessment. Here is another example of a DPGT form that I had from last school year. And again, DPGT stands for Deliberate Practice Growth Target. And this is how it looks at the end of the year with my reflection, which is what I need to do soon to the one from this year. Along with this form included, because this is a packet that I gave to my administrators last year, I have artifacts that address professional development and communication. So let me show you some of those. This is my learning plan transcript from last year. That's a program that we use in order to monitor our professional development activities that we go to. I'm not showing you the rest of it because of obvious reasons, there's personal information. But at the bottom of this, it shows the different professional development activities that I participated in during the school year, the previous school year. I also included additional certificates of other professional development activities that I engaged in last school year that goes beyond because if we just do what is on my learning plan and only go to PD during the two PD days they give us during the school year, 
we are only classified as being effective. In order to be highly effective, we need to go beyond what is already provided for us. So if we do an online professional development like this one through Sanford Inspire program, which is a free program that you can go and do online PDs, they consider this to be highly effective. Also, last school year, I was a presenter at the Florida Reading Association, so I included this artifact to show that I am going above and beyond, and that is me right there. And I also participated in in-school professional development where I was one of the presenters. The other thing that I include to show my artifacts for communication is a sample of messages through Class Dojo. And again, I'm not showing you what those messages are for privacy reasons. And I also include the report that Remind gives you for all the messages that you corresponded with with parents. Last year, I gave 120 messages, but during this window, so I included that. Again, this shows that I'm going above and beyond just the sample communication log, and this will guarantee you, instead of getting an effective, a highly effective. So yeah, those are all the forms that made up my packet that I submitted at the end of the year for my summative. And now I'm getting ready to do it again for this school year. So yeah, that's basically all the documentation that we use throughout the school year in order for teachers to be evaluated. And that includes the observation, which is part of our evaluation system. And again, the observations are not intended to be a catch you or, hey, you're not doing this right. It's more meant to be a way for us to reflect on our practice and continue to grow as professionals so that we can continue to meet the needs of our students. So that's basically what I wanted to share with you with regards to teacher evaluation and observations. Maybe in a future video, what I can do is I can dedicate a separate video to each of the professional learning standards. If you're interested in that, leave a comment down below and let me know if those are videos that you will be interested in doing. If I do those videos, I will be going over what are the different things that are being looked at for each of those professional standards and what are some artifacts that you can start to gather maybe keep folders for each professional standard so that you show that you are meeting what that professional standard is asking you to do anyway i hope you enjoy this video i hope that it was useful to you in some way or another if you have any questions please don't hesitate to leave me a comment and i'll be sure to get back to you Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please hit the like button and also leave a comment down below and let me know how teachers in your district or school are evaluated. I love to listen to what other teachers go through and find similarities to it or differences. That's always a good conversation to have. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing and also hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss any future videos. Have a beautiful, magical day and don't forget to smile.